morning all, and Merry Christmas, <laughs> and welcome to um, Q&A on Christmas Day. That's right, isn't it? That rhymes. Pleased with that. Um, yeah, obviously recorded. It's Friday here. Uh, I stopped running on Thursday. I did. I said to myself, if I have a decent week, I'm not going to break me neck near the end because. You know the traffic's going to get bad. You know that there's very little chance of getting a return load on Friday because everything's going to be shut by about um, midday. Everyone I spoke to said, you working? When's your last day? 23rd. Right. What time? 12 o'clock. So you think, well, there's nothing going to happen in the morning, like, you know. So And then I got what I really hoped for, which is the regular job that I get with a plumbing and wait and return on Thursday morning. And that was enough. So I had yesterday off, yesterday afternoon off, and today is Friday. And I, of course, you know, she got a day off, so of course you haven't got a day off. So today I'll be collecting the food. I've got to check my wife's tyre. Apparently the tyre pressure lights come on. But then I said, tyre pressure lights come on. They come on all the time. But I've got a little gauge. I'm going to check it with that. All right? Um, yeah. So nearly there, guys. Nearly there. So what we got to look at this week? Firstly, from Bazaar in a van, and Sean Gill Martin and Shane Hardy. Merry Christmas, guys! <laughs> they jumped in and wished a Merry Christmas to you all. Obviously, you know, and Happy New Year and all that. I've got a cat on the table. What's she doing? Distracting me is what she's is what she's doing. She's jumping up. Um, but yeah, but enough about the festivities, which I'm sure you're all. Uh, ready to engage in or engaging in or have engaged in if you're watching this video later on like you know how long should you wait for your next job now as i've always said with the cx it's there's no hard and fast way about doing it you do it your way this is just how i tend to do it that doesn't make it right and if you've got the ability to tramp particularly if you're in a trap with a bed you might want to do it slightly differently uh but this way I do it. So Cheesy Bud says, thanks for the help. Best up with New Year. Thank you, Cheesy. Uh, Leachy says, uh, hi, Pete, and happy Christmas to you and your family. Thank you, mate. Yeah, it's very festive, isn't it? It's all good. Um, I think I do most of the things that you said already. I lost count of the amount of times where I've left an area only for a job to pop up once I'm out of the area. It's a gamble we take on a daily basis. I do a regular job down at Gosport every Monday morning. I can sit there for up to two hours waiting to get a job that suits me. I'll be using a different strategy next year once the warmer weather is upon us. Got another entry. Oh, he's got another entry for the Strangest um, Award. Um, for the Career Driver Awards, but we'll come to that. I've got that one, I've written that one down at the end. So, uh, Shane Hardy says, Thanks for the video as well. He said, I'm going to start taking notes from your videos, ready to take the CX when I plunge into it in the new year. Shane, I don't know if you, the videos are all out there and they may be of help, if, particularly if there's one specific thing you're not sure about. You can Google it and chances are there'll be a video on it. But you've got to bear in mind, mate, it, it's just my opinion. And like I say, everybody does it their way, you know. And I'm still, I've been doing it about four years now, so I'm getting a better grip of what's going on. But I'm still learning, I still don't know what the score is. But fortunately, when you do start, we've got the wise guys. Any problems, stick it in the notes. And I'm sure I've, when I can't figure it out, someone out there who knows better than me will. So we also did the Winter Wonderland video. <laughs> Which is, I think I'm writing these things down. Um, yeah, which is, um, it just, it was kind of, um, admittedly, we're doing a Greg Lake there at the moment. We kind of, don't forget your four categories of Christmas songs. Um, do a link, very important. Uh, Greg Lake will be number three, category three, observational. They said there'd be snow at Christmas. Well, at the moment, it's pouring down with rain and it's washed all the snow away. Um, but at least it will make driving running. So if you are running on the last day before, at least that will make your running easier, I hope. So, um, Godzilla, he says, uh, he said it looks pretty. Oddly, in the Midlands, we didn't get any snow, just a minor dusting. I know that was weird because I had people, I was ringing them up going, I've got to get my truck out of the yard. And I've had to get the, the farmer with a digger to plough the snow out. And there was a guy saying, I'm in Yorkshire, we've got nothing. Oh, yeah, it started in Brighton. It's, it's normally the other way around, doesn't it? Um, he said it's freezing, though. He said, I have to do a temperature test on the days, at, um, and it warmed up one day to show a minus 4.6. On the, the wind chill factor on the truck, when I was driving it to work some mornings, I had minus 11. But that's wind chill. That's not the same thing, like, you know. Um, uh, the day was a lot cooler at around... He got minus eight, yeah. Uh, time, he said, I've got some time, I'll come in, be forced to book a holiday, which is an odd feeling. I know exactly how you feel. When I took, I still forgot that imposter thing. 
I said to the wife, if I, if I do well, I said to Lisa, if I do well, I have the end of the week off. And of course, you finished on Thursday afternoon. Oh, there's a job. Late and buzz has got to be delivered in Northampton in the morning. Oh, I can do it. Oh, I can do it. And I'm like, why? You've got there. You've got everything you need to do. All that can happen from this point of view is something can go wrong, and you can you can park up and you you, you think why did why did I stop? Why am I now got? Why have I had an accident? Why has someone hit me? Why is the truck broken down? If only I'd stopped yesterday. I've always said this story. There was I used to work next to this material lady on Charlton Street where I used to do the markets. Uh, old Jewish lady, lovely woman called Viv. And one day it was pouring down with rain, and it was a Friday, which you know, that's where we used to work there. And it was like about half past five, and it was dead. And I normally pack up at two o'clock. And I went, Well, I said, I want to go home. And she went, Go home then. I went, Yeah, but what happens if I stay here for an extra half an hour and I get a couple of decent punters? I could, um, I could you know, I could take another 50, 100 quid. That's take, that's not that. And she looked at me and she said, Peter, would it change your life? And I went, no. She went, go home then. <laughs> so I did. It didn't change my life, and I felt a lot better for it. So yesterday, I, in the spirit of Viv, I went home. And I can't. I, I did look at it this morning. There were a couple of jobs out this morning. I could have run a day, but I am not beating myself up about it. I didn't even take some holiday this year, so this is my holiday. My holiday started a day early. You can tell I'm not beating myself up about it because I'm still talking about it right now. <laughs> So let's talk enough about me. Godzilla's 23 said, um, on the Winter Wonderland thing, he said, I delivered Santa's Grotto and all the associated decorations for the Winter Wonderland to Fishgate Shopping Centre in Preston just before we had the COVID nightmare. Had to get um, had to get there after it closed and handballed it all in. It doesn't sound pleasant. And he's a truck driver, so it's probably loads on that one. So. Um, and finally, the last one on this one comes from Cousin Darren. Hello, mate. How you doing? He said, Nifty Lift is around the corner from my house. That doesn't surprise me. I'm not sure which one, but I'm, I'm trying to work out where you are in relation to um, Milton Keynes. Still haven't got the main around Milton Keynes. But he said, also, Tim Mitchin's White Wine in the Sun is my favourite Christmas song ever. Darren, the only reason I know about Tim Mitchin's um, White Wine in the Sun is because you told me about it. <laughs> and it is a great song. It's not my favourite. Great Lane. Categories of Christmas songs, don't forget. Uh, this week on The Wise Guys, uh, Steve, Cam oh, Steve Campbell's coming on this one. He said, um, a 12 tonne is just a 7.5 tonne with bigger wheels and upgraded suspension. Now, I know this because I passed my Class 2 test in a 12 tonne. And it was a dream because it was basically driving the vehicle that I already drove. I was driving a 7.5 tonne DAF. It was literally exactly the same vehicle, except for it was a metre longer. And I said to the guy halfway through my test, I went, look, I know I can already drive this vehicle because I drive it every day. And he went, well, you've got to be slightly different. I went, yeah, it's a metre longer. That's it. I said, in fact, this is an automatic. Mine's a manual, so mine's actually harder to drive. Whether that had any, he passed me, whether that had any, you know, sort of sway on the test, I don't know. <clears throat> but he says, Steve says, just with bigger wheels and upgraded suspension, the empty weight between a 7.5 tonne and a 12 tonne, there's not much difference. So whereas a 7.5 tonne can carry 2.5 tonne, a 12 tonne can carry 7 tonne. That's quite a lot. When you bear in mind that mine's an 18 tonne and it can carry 10 tonne, so I can carry 3 tonne more, for a vehicle which has actually got a gross weight of, yeah, so it's 6 tonne more, and I can carry three ton more, which means my lorry, my, my, my lorry weighs in at eight ton. And so he's saying a seven and a half ton's gonna weigh in at around, uh, sorry, 12 ton's gonna weigh in about five ton. Yeah, that makes sense. Mm. Oh, it's good at mess, isn't it? Um, having said that, I've carried 10 ton on my 18 ton, and it's not fun. You know, the, the, the wheel arches are right like that even the front is not very pretty if you go around corners too fast and this is what i'm proper spaced as well don't get me wrong i haven't got all the fun at the front axle proper space I go around now what it would be like to carry seven ton in a 12 ton i don't know but i don't think it would i think it would be even less fun you guys out there if you know give us a comment we'll, we'll uh, pass it on which leads us actually um neatly on to trucks <clears throat> Um, user GD4 says, 
Pete, he says, I'm about to jump straight from my car license to a class one. I'm 26 with no commitments at home. Do you think eight to 900 pound a week tramping is achievable by the time I'm 30? Cheers, mate. I presume that you're talking about working for someone else. Uh, yes, absolutely achievable, particularly if you're going to do international. If you get international, you can get over a thousand pound a week just working with someone else. If you want to get your own lorry, you could stand to make more than that. But as I've said all the way along, getting lorries is involved. There's a lot, you know. There's sort of there's there's lots out there on on um, you know transport managers and parking and all that kind of stuff. You know, it's 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 heavy. And talking to drivers when they don't do it right. I've got a driver at the moment, and I've had to have a chat with him. Um, he got 15 infringements in three weeks. What are you doing? I'm rung him up. I went, you know how your car works. How did you manage to get this many infringements? I blessed him. I don't think he's... Um, he's had a tragedy, and I, I don't think he's, he's, his mind's in the job. But I've spoken to him. Um, I've obviously, I've had to give him... I've told him, so I've got to give you a bit of warning. I've, I've spoke to my transport manager. I've got no choice on this one, so I've, I've done all that, right, you know. But um, hopefully he'll put himself into speed in the new year. But it's stuff you don't need. Sometimes I do lament the old days of running in a van. But having said that, if you ask me, would I swap? No. <laughs> I like my truck. So miscellaneous this week. It's a short one this week probably because um, I'm recording it early. And besides, I'm sure you've got better things to do. Turkey to eat, crackers to pull. You know, I'm, I'm a 70s child. To me, Christmas is kind of uh, watching Noel Evans on top of the post office tower and a uh, few beers and falling asleep in front of Bonfield. That's kind of how it used to work. Um, so, miscellaneous this week. Uh, Alex Robinson says, Pete, I'm a little vague, I know, but do you think um, but do you think the general feeling towards CX is that there are too many drivers and too little work, hence the competitiveness? I'm looking to start my own same-day courier company in the next few months as I have a lot of contacts all around the country that give me work if I get it right. I plan to do some jobs for myself but use the CX to subcontract most of the jobs out whilst building a network of drivers and enough work to employ my own. I can get between 125 and 150 per mile for a small van jobs for my customer, from my customers so I feel the CX, using CX to get these jobs covered is I mean, is really able. Any advice would be appreciated. Um, and it's, you know, we've done a video on this one before as well. It's basically what you're talking about is shipping. You're talking about freight forwarding, and that is exactly what the CX is for. It's not really. The CX is designed as a backload platform, but it's also designed for people like you, who, if you've got plenty of your own customers, particularly if you're getting 125 to 150 a mile on a small van, I dare say that you'll get quotes coming in for around about a pound a mile, which I think is what small van jobs sell for. Now, if you're lucky, you get the right guy in the right place at the right time, you might get some slightly cheaper quotes than that. But yes, I do think you certainly can make money doing that. It, it's again, it's I, 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 depends where you are and all that kind of stuff. You're going to get more jobs, you're going to get more vans around you if you're in a sort of better area, it's not a better area, but a sort of um, a more mainstream area like London or Milton Keynes or Derby than you will if you're in Exeter or, or Plymouth. You're not going to get that many vans in Plymouth, like you know. But then having said that, if yeah, if you want any more information, mate, just you know, drop us another thing in the link. But I do think on the whole, it's certainly on what you've just told me there, it certainly would be worth a punt. So uh domain name guy says, uh Tesla have teamed up with Mercedes, which means there'll be a Tesla van before long, like the man van, which is the same as a crafter. Plus if vehicles are going electric only only in twenty thirty, those diesel vans won't uh, won't be able to sell them as they won't be used. It, I don't know if the technology is going to be there by 2030. I think what they're saying is by 2030 we won't be manufacturing any more diesel vehicles. But there'll probably be you'll probably still be able to use the diesel vehicles you've got, particularly particularly where lorries are. I mean, will we have enough? Will we have built enough battery powered? tractor units for Arctics, enough battery-powered 18-ton vans to ship everything around the country that we need to by 2030. I guess only time will tell. I mean, what, we're nearly 2023 now, seven years from now. I'll be nearly 60. Will I be still driving a truck by then? I don't know. <laughs> Something I've learned in life is um, try to enjoy the moment. Yeah, you know, I worry about it later. I'd be, it's very, it'd be mindful of the present. Uh, there's there's a great song. Well, well, I don't know. It's kind of reminiscent a bit here, aren't we? So there's there's a song by the Flaming Lips, 
uh, called Do You Realise? It's brilliant. I think it's Mark Radcliffe's funeral song, you know, him on the radio. And there's, he basically, it's, there's a line in it where he basically says, realise that time goes fast, it's hard to make the good times last. And that's what I'm going to try and do over Christmas. I know, already when I started to pack up, I started to think, yeah, but in eight days' time, in ten days' time, I'm back to work again, I've got the whole year. And I'm like, don't start thinking about going back to work now. Just enjoy it. <laughs> Sit down and remember what I do this morning. I go up and watch the Guardians of the Galaxy Christmas special. I've been saving it. It's been on the TV for two, three weeks. I thought, nope, I'm going to wait till near Christmas. I watched it. It was good. I'm not going to spoil any of it for you. You might not have seen it. Um, but, yeah, I'm just going to enjoy it. I'm gonna, and I'm going to start clocking down. Things. I'll see what things I have to do. got this video left to do. May pop to the truck gym, get the food. And then after that, I'm just going to have a rest. <laughs> do what I would do on holiday. Nothing. As little as possible. So, but, um, yeah, as for 2030, we'll just have to wait and see, won't we? So, um, he also goes on to say, he said, at least with parcels, etc., you'll be busy in quiet January, February, and March, as people can't stop buying off the internet, um, but the exchange will be quiet. This is something else that's occurred to me. I mean, I don't know if anyone's noticed, but um, there seems to be a bit of a parcel chaos at the moment. Stuff with orders taking weeks to come. Royal Mail have got cages upon cages parked outside their um, yards. Uh, I think every might be behind as well. At some point, they're going to have to go, we haven't got enough of our own vans to clear this backlog. We're going to get some vans in. And that means multi-drop for the day. But if the money's right and there's no other work, maybe take it. I know some people say after Christmas that if the exchange is quiet, they decide to go and do a bit of Amazon or do a bit of this or do a bit of Chipley or something like that. Do it any way you can to make money, absolutely. And another one from the main guy here, he says there's a miscellaneous, as couriers are typing in postcodes into their sat-navs, etc. the UK, oh, it's something about vehicle UK number plates. I didn't quite understand this. It was to do with, it seemed to be something like, um, I didn't know if it was like a game. I'm sorry, I'm sorry, my friend. I got a bit confused by that one, but thanks very much for the comments anyway. So, um, Sean Gilmartin says, now it's going to be. He says, always assume that anything on Friday before Christmas is shut by dinner. Most people are planning to get out the door as soon as they get there. Had this at a private hospital once or twice. By 12 noon, it was a ghost town. But it's going to be too late to tell you all this now because it's coming out on Christmas Day. But I dare say that there will be some comments between Christmas. That would be an interesting question between Christmas and New Year. Or how many of you went out today and got stuck with something on board? And I'm not trying to do an I told you so. I'm just curious to know how it goes, like, you know. And I hope you didn't, and I hope your Christmas goes well. Uh, Godzilla says, as I mentioned before about printing off paperwork on the move, he said, I printed off paperwork on the move. I quoted him an extra 40 quid as I needed to go to the local library. When I started, I've done a video on this in the past, um, I didn't even have a printer. I hate printers. I don't talk to them. They're annoying. And Fabian says that the one I've got at the moment works really well. So as long as it does, brilliant. But then one that instant ink thing where it sort of sends you ink when you need to and takes money out your bank and it just everybody's on a direct debit now, aren't they? Get your get your hand out of my pocket. But um, they are. So it's just and it works. I'm not going to cry about it. And ink ain't cheap. So, but uh, yeah, when I started, I used to go to the library and go and, on a Saturday morning. I'd go and do all my PODs, print them off. Get, I'd take my little kit with me and put them in envelopes. God, I'm going back the wrong way. Worked out how to fold them up with little window envelopes because it saved writing them all off. Get the post, go down the post office. Kind of, it's what you do. So, well, fair play to him. He said, once there, sent me, opened up my emails, fired off one, printed it, cost me 10 p per sheet, but it was easy, extra 40 quid for doing so. Yeah, well done, you. I suppose you've got to find it. I presume, were you in a lorry at the time or a van? Because it's not so easy to park a truck outside a library, depending on your library, I suppose. Um, Colin Crookson says the system we're still on the first three digits of the postcode he said system setting to show the first three digits just press the view map button as this shows the location based on the full postcode assuming that one was put in the first place yeah I said that I think I said that last week Colin which is if you're not sure where you're going go to view map and then do the thing you think expand it out and it will give you a much better idea of where the pin is because I've had it before where it says London I went, London whereabouts in London I did London this week it was a weird one. Monday, I went to pick up my regular job, only to find that someone had already got it. So I got cancellation fee. And then there was uh, eight pallets of uh, Christmas crackers. 
had to go. It wasn't really London, it's Edgware, which is like North London, it's kind of Junction 4 type thing. So I thought, well, I'm going to put a bid in. I didn't know what the last week was going to be like. So I thought, I put a bid in, and I'll put it in with the um, with with the, the emissions charge. And what, ten minutes later, they phoned me. I was like, whoa. London is not fun in a lorry. <laughs> you can do it, but... I wouldn't choose to do it. Just people, you know, this industrial state where people just park their cars everywhere and you're going through about five miles an hour going like this, seeing that you've got that far on each side. Like, well, that's a Mercedes, and that wing mirror is probably worth 300 quid. But, yeah, it was it was Christmas crackers. I turned around to the guy and went, um, he said, what are these Christmas crackers? I went, you're a bit late, aren't you? <laughs> I think they've all gone by now. And they went, actually, can I have a box? I put a plate him. He said, do you want one? I went, no, no, mate, I'm only joking. I've got to, we've got two boxes already. The kid gets them because of the interior design thing. We've got, like, posh Christmas crackers somewhere. And fair play to him again. 15 minutes later, or 10 minutes later, I was getting unloaded. He came up. No, seriously, do you want a box? I went, you're a very kind man. But thank you, no. Um, G, is it, is it Grigsio? says, he said, I've just come off the phone to a CX executive. The CX is over a thousand pound a year. Yes, it probably is. <laughs> In fairness, I know people. I mean, I think Van on the run. He was just doing his repeat subscription. Was paying eight hundred and fifty. Yes, it is. And guys, I've got to say, if you're gonna join, this is probably not the best time to join. So, if you're gonna join because you fancy a new crack at something, and you're looking at January, it's kipper season. Um, it's it's always quiet in January and because everything's been done and everything's all closed down and it will take a little while for the machine to get running again and get oil back in the machine. So it should pick up around beginning of February, middle of February, but and then it should theoretically get busier right up until the end of the year. I can't, I have necessarily done that this year, but um, it's been steady. I can live with steady, but be aware if you are going to join now, you're going to have to try a bit harder in January. That's just the way it is. But then having said that, baptism by fire. If you join now and you can survive January, there's a good chance that you'll make it the rest of the year. So, And um, finally, um, in conclusion, as I said from Leachy earlier on, he said, I've got another entry for the Strangest Job Award when I went to a mortuary and picked up a brain and took it to hospital so it could be examined. That is a definite... It's almost a shoe in that one, I would say, Leachy. So remember, we're doing the um, Alternative Career Awards for next year, which is if you that's what is the strangest load, what is the best return you've ever had, what is the strangest directions you've ever had, or the weirdest place to try to find. Like, how on earth am I supposed to find this? It was like down a wiggly path, up a well. No, you could down well, stick you, you know, round and under past this kind of thing, like you know. So, and finally, a conclusion I'm just going to say, guys, thanks again for watching all the time, all the support. Um, it is truly appreciated, and I genuinely hope that you are doing well out there. I hope that you're really, I hope you have a wonderful Christmas. I hope your relatives are not irritating. I hope that the turkey is not dry. I hope you drink a nice amount so that it gets you pleasantly jolly without actually falling over and being sick. Um, and I wish you a happy, and I hope the TV is entertaining. But most of all, I wish you a happy new year. And a merry, merry Christmas. And that when 2003 comes, I hope you take care and take money.